Hello and welcome once again to Home Bible Study, from my home to your home. This is Robert Holler, the Rightly Divider, thanking you for taking the time to observe this video. Today's lesson, ladies and gentlemen, emergency video, Satan's powers made manifest. Now, this is a spur-of-the-moment video. This is a video that came on almost instantaneously that uh, I cannot ignore, and it needs to be put out immediately. When we look at what's going on in the world, the time is very short. We don't have a time that we can put on, but we see the signs, and we can line them up with Scripture. And we're very close to what is happening. And it has to be made manifest so that people can understand the core of what really is going on that the world itself cannot see. Now I'm going to give you some scripture and then we're going to get into the things that uh, need to be made manifest of the spiritual wickedness in the high places that's causing all this. This is part of the Spiritual warfare going nuclear, and it's going to get more and more intense. In the book of 2 Thessalonians, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to start in verse 3. And this is where Paul is talking to the Thessalonians in Thessalonica. Because somebody had creeped in and told them the day of the Lord was already at hand. In other words, they were he came and caught up his body of Christ believers that are saved by grace through faith and trying to scare some people and put doubt in their minds. Because Paul starts in chapter 3, he, I mean chapter 2, verse 3, he says, Let no man deceive you by any means, except for except there be falling away first, and then that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Now this will tie into the study so he says that because he talked about, then he goes on to talk about, do you not remember that when I was with you before I told you these things? Because we're going to also tell you something that in verse 7 of the same chapter, for the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he that now letteth will, until he be taken out of the way. Now, I did a video on who's holding the worker of iniquity at bay at this time, and that's Jesus Christ and the Spirit that dwells within us, that are saints saved by grace through faith, until we're caught up. Then Jesus Christ and the Spirit will no longer have any hold on this earth whatsoever. But we're looking at the mystery of iniquity tonight, and that's what prompted this emergency video to be put out Tonight, we have things going on in the world. And here's the thing about that. We that are, that are saved by grace through faith in the revelation of the mystery, uh, in the spirit of Jesus Christ, and are members of the spiritual body, the body of Christ church, which is of his body, which we are eternal in the heavenlies, we are not to entice ourselves with the affairs of this world. So by saying that and putting out this video, I want to make this perfectly clear. All we're doing as saints saved by grace through faith, we are ambassadors for Christ, we are also soldiers for Jesus Christ, and we are evangelists for Jesus Christ. In the sense of being a soldier for Jesus Christ, we must not entice ourselves with the affairs of this world, but we are to entice ourselves with the full armor of God to fight the spiritual warfare. And that's what we're doing as a soldier of Jesus Christ. And we have the sword of the Spirit, which is the very word of Jesus Christ, the living word in his Spirit, for our offense, as I explained in other videos. What we are to do, and what I want to do in this video, is to make manifest, or, or to be made known, what the workers of iniquity are, and what is happening, and warn the natural man of the flesh that are blinded to the gospel by Satan, it's foolishness unto them. They cannot understand it because it's spiritually hidden. 
We don't have the power to shine the light that they can have that their minds uh, unblinded to the truth so they can accept the gospel. That's Jesus Christ can do that with his power, his grace, what he did for us at the cross. What we can do is make manifest to show mankind just what's really going on and they should take heed to it. Because you see, the world is in such a turmoil in every aspect, to include this country. People don't know where to turn. There's so many things that are going haywire that are in need of attention. There's not enough manpower to address them all. You look at the turmoil that's in the, just in the world itself with all the rumors of the wars that are coming. I mean, you have unrest in the Far East. You have unrest in the Middle East. You have far, uh, far unrest in the nation, in the continent of Europe. You have unrest in North America, China, North Korea. Everywhere you look, Japan, you have unrest. You have something going on that is negative. And this needs to be manifested. Now, I ask you, and I will make this statement, can we stop Satan? And the answer is absolutely not. Because what's happening is all of the world. It's all of the flesh. And see, Satan wants people to be so engulfed in that, they're not going to have time to look at it from the outside in. They're looking at it from the inside to the inside. That's all they can do. We that are saved by grace through faith have the spiritual Jesus Christ living within us and his spiritual truth will look at it from the spiritual realm and see all this going on. But you see, Satan has a problem. He has a little bit of a task ahead of him because he is doing this through his demonic helpers that are ministers of righteousness or disguised as ministers of righteousness. And what he has working for him today, he has religion, he has the economic system, he has the World Economic Forum, he has... Um, all kinds of different uh, divisions of ruling governments over people, such as communism, socialism, Marxism, totalitarianism, dictatorships, spread out all over the world that are ways that people try to tell people this is the way we can control our societies and govern you and everything will be fine. So he's got all these things going on. But he started with something completely different than all of those combined. Because they're all of the flesh, they're all of the world. Because you see, at the cross is when Satan had to pull back and come up with some other kind of plan because he was defeated at the cross of Christ. Because he had spent all of his energy, all of everything that he had the power to do on getting Jesus Christ crucified on the cross, thinking that when Jesus Christ died in the flesh, it would be over. But see, he didn't bank on the revelation of the mystery. He didn't bank on Jesus Christ in the spirit. He didn't bank on that Jesus Christ was the flesh, but inside the flesh of Jesus Christ dwelt the very God of all creation in the spirit. He didn't bank on that. See, that was all kept secret, although the people knew that the Spirit had came on to Jesus Christ, but they had no idea what his plan was, which was called the revelation of the mystery, which was made in eternity past. That put a thorn in the side of Satan, if you will, because Satan found out about this after the cross. My goodness, he saw Jesus of Nazareth being resurrected in a flesh, uh, in claiming to be the Jesus Christ this very Son of God at this point. Because you remember by reading in Scripture that Jesus of Nazareth gave up something at the cross before he died in the flesh. He had to give up his spirit. And that spirit is the same spirit of Jesus Christ that rose him from the dead. A big problem for Satan. So that's where Satan started all this, is at the cross. And what you're seeing today is just a continuation of his great plan that he thinks it is. Because he started out with something very basic that people don't even consider. A lot of people don't. He kept something that Jesus Christ went to the cross to, to abolish. 
which was a law. Now, we know in Scripture that's what it says. So Satan couldn't come back and bring in the law. He's trying to always bring people to keep that law alive, but he knows that's not going to work as a separate entity. He had to bring something in that could be more powerful, more influential in this world. So what did Satan do? Satan brought in religion. You see, because when Jesus Christ fulfilled the law at the cross, and the Bible says that he did, religion, the Jews' religion at that time, was part of the law. Because they turned the commandments of God into the traditions of men and became the doctrines of devils, which was religion. So Satan decided he had to go back and bring something forward and renew it in the minds of peoples that he had blinded. Religion was the way to go. So he, he incorporated religion again, brought it back in. And you look at the history from the cross. What problems did Paul even have when he was trying to teach the revelation of the mystery, the spirituality of Jesus Christ, where we are saved by grace through faith, introducing the body of Christ church? He always was fighting the Jews and their religion. And then you look through history, something came in that mankind deemed as called Christianity. And you look at the things that have branched off from Christianity. Islam is one of them. But you look at the destruction of Christianity. And you look at what Christianity was capable of doing. It almost conquered the world through Rome. It became very powerful, very rich, and oh, so very destructive to control, to have that power and the money and the influence. You look at Christianity today, you look at, and Christianity is a biggest religion of this world, and it contains within it multitudes of little. It's like a big umbrella corporation, and inside of this big umbrella is all these little corporations. Now you have denominations, non-denominations, all professing to be part of this worldwide religion called Christianity. But you also have ones a little bit on the outside, like Islam. And you have the Buddhists, and you have Hindu, Hinduism, you have all these other religions that all have something in common. They're all a religion, and Satan uses every one of them. That is the basic foundation that the world's troubles are in today, are based on. But he has people so involved in the things of this world, people don't even think about it. They don't recognize it. See, they see the things that are around them. They react to the flesh that's around them. They react to the things that are going on in the Middle East in the flesh. They react to the things going on in Eastern Europe to the flesh. They uh, react to the things going on in their own countries to the flesh. And it all stems back to things of the flesh. Economics, the borders, infrastructure, inflation, a way of life, crime, health. All these things are of the flesh of this world, which Satan has total control of. And the very basis of it all started with religion, and it branched out from there. And you can see it if you study it, rightly divided, and if you look at it from the spiritual realm of Jesus Christ, being able to separate the spirit from the flesh, law from grace. And you can separate it when you look at the finished work of the cross and you can see what Satan tried to bring back in to make it less of the finished work of the cross for people. And that's why we cannot stop Satan. It is not our job to stop Satan. He is in control of this world. Jesus Christ is here dwelling within us, keeping the son of perdition at bay. But the worker of iniquity has already been gone, going on very strong right after the cross. That's the worker of iniquity, is what you're seeing from Satan. He's a spiritual witness in high places that uses the principalities, the rulers of the darkness of this world. That is a spiritual wickedness. That is the uh, workers of iniquity that we're experiencing. Because Paul said even back in his day, the worker of iniquity is already at work from day one after Jesus Christ's resurrection. It started to come into play. Jesus Christ could, or Satan could not touch the risen, ascended, the glory, Jesus Christ in the spirit. He couldn't touch him. 
And Jesus Christ brought in the revelation of the mystery, which is something Satan cannot touch. Because it was formed before the foundation of the world, kept it secret, and then now it is in heaven. It is without spot, it is without, without wrinkle, and Satan never had a chance to contaminate it with sin. But he had a chance to contaminate everything else with his sins, with his lies, and his great plan to once again take care of Jesus Christ once and for all. He still thinks he has a chance at it because he does not have the wisdom of Almighty God. He is not the creator of all things. He's a created being himself. So we have this all going on, and it's frightening people. And you listen to people on social media, and you listen to people on the news networks, whatever. They think they have the answers because they can see and react to the things of the flesh. When they don't realize something about the flesh and of this world, and those people that involve themselves within all of this, and entice themselves within the affairs of this world to include their own countries, their own communities, to get actively involved, to try and solve these enormous problems that are coming at them in tidal ways now. It's becoming overwhelming. People are going to crash. Countries are going to crash. Financial institutions are going to crash. And all of this is a plan of Satan all along. And it's, it's building to a crescendo. Because you look at what's controlling the world today. It is Satan, but his demonic helpers. Again, all these governmental institutions that I talked about, from communism to, to, to totalitarianism, and everything in between. Plus, the World Economic Forum, the World Banking System. It's all predicated on the almighty dollar, if you will. Because you look at the ones that are controlling this country. The mega corporations, the rich, the billionaires plus. Look at the companies, Amazon, Microsoft, Facebook. Uh, you have the multimedia, Comcast, Big Pharma. You think these companies came to be by just having good economic systems and business people that know how to make a buck? then you're more blinded than you think. It all has to do with the power of Satan. Because why did Paul tell us something so very plain and true, yet some people, they just don't look at the scope of what that verse means. For the love of money is the root of all evil. But some have covered it after, and they erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. It's the first symmetry. Look it up. Put that against what's going on in the world. And you look at our country. This is a good example to look at. Look at the turmoil that our country is in. And it's not only our country. It's all over the world. But this is how Satan is setting everything up perfectly to his plan. The people today in this, in this country, United States, don't know which way to turn. Some are hoping for this. Some are hoping for that. And most of them, the majority of them, are hoping for one person to come in to save them, to be their Savior in the flesh. Now, here's the, the kicker of all that. They think that a man by the name of Donald Trump is going to be the one that's going to save them, and he's their only hope to have any kind of chance to have this constitutional republic, which is what the United States really is and how it was founded, to survive. Because if he doesn't come in and do that, the ones that are going to get in are already so involved in satanic activity, they're totally controlled by power, money, and Satan. So either way. But here's the problem with that, ladies and gentlemen. It's of the flesh, and it's all temporary. Let's say Donald Trump gets in, and people are saying, oh, it's only going to be by the grace of God that he gets in. No, it's not. God's not going to have anything to do with it. Jesus Christ is not dealing with nations today, people. So he's not going to make sure that Donald Trump gets elected to save this country. Donald Trump may get elected, but will he have the ability to finish the four years? Look what happened to John F. Kennedy. I'm just saying and throwing this out for food of thought for you people that are of the flesh that entice yourself with the things of this world. But you're not seeing what's behind the scenes, ruling and reigning with it all. 
It is the principalities, the powers, and the rulers of the darkness of this world that have everything going according to Satan's plan. But see, Satan still has a problem. He still has those of us that are grace believers who rightly divide the word of truth that still teach the revelation of the mystery. And that's the only thing we can do tonight and tomorrow and the next day is to make manifest the revelation of the mystery, to tell people of religions, of non-religions, whoever will listen. And there's very few that will because they're so preoccupied with the flesh, they aren't going to want to listen to anything of the spirit of Jesus Christ. But it is our job. That is what we do. We are going to make manifest the revelation of the mystery like we never have before because it is critical that it is taken and shown to the lost world. Because the revelation of the mystery where we are saved by grace through faith, become members of the body of Christ Church, are eternal. It has eternal ramifications to it. Where thus things of the world that Satan is trying to get everybody involved in, and he has, are temporary. There's nothing eternal about that because you look back in uh, the book of Ecclesiastes. What did King Solomon say? There's nothing new under the sun. But look at the world today and look at what's happening and look how people are reacting to it and what they're, what Satan wanted them to do and it's working perfectly is to get infighting amongst the inside. That's what's happening in the United States. That's what's happening in other countries. That's happening in Europe. It's happening in the continent of Asia, Africa, all over. You can't escape it. It's there. If you don't think it is, you're turning a blind eye to, the, to what is really happening in the flesh of this world. And it's working perfectly because that's the only way empires will ever take themselves out. Because an empire is a, a parasitic organization. It's a parasitic civilization. It feeds off of other civilized nations. Once it takes care of and ate up all the other ones, it has nothing left to feed on but what? Itself. It will destroy itself from within. And that's where the Republic of the United States of America is headed. Whether there'll be a republic in the next couple of years, it's highly doubtful that there will be. Regardless of who wins the election, ladies and gentlemen, regardless of the party that you think you affiliate yourself with, that makes no difference. It's all temporary. It's all the flesh. And it's all of Satan's great plan. And it has to be made manifest to everybody now. Because if, it's, if you go down that route and you disregard what we're trying to show you in the revelation of the mystery, where you can be saved by grace through faith and have eternal life with Jesus Christ, ruling and reigning with him in the heavenlies as co-heirs with Christ, the God of all creation. You're going to end up right where Satan is going to end up. You're going to end up in hell first. Then you're going to uh, stand as the great white throne judgment. Then you'll be cast into the lake of fire where you're going to meet Satan again. And everybody else is affiliated with controlling that have the love of the money. Because that brings power. That brings control. And it started with Christianity. It started with a religion. The very basic foundation that was laid after the cross by Satan was to bring back religion. It was part of the law. And it's been working perfectly for him. You look at the religion of Christianity, what it's done, look at its history, but look at it where it is today. It is the most recognized, the most powerful, the richest, the most influential, and the most controlling entity within this world today. It has its roots in everything. It has its fingers in everything. It has its fingers in the Middle East. It has its fingers in the Far East. It has its fingers in Eastern Europe. It has its tentacles, if you will, in every country of this world and every part of civilizations of this world. Religion does. And the rest of it, whether the people that control even these United States today, there is demonic helpers of Satan in every country doing this, regardless of their beliefs. They're still under that love of money, the power and the control. So they're just as much of a religious person as you Christians of Christianity are. Except they'll probably deny it. And they'll say, I'm my own God because I became rich by what I have done. But you see, these people have given up their own souls to what? Inherit the world. 
something Jesus Christ taught his people, the nation of Israel, before the cross, under the law. He said, what good is it for a man to inherit the whole world and lose his soul? For what will man give up in order to gain the world but lose his soul? I'm paraphrasing that last part. But that's what you're looking at. And you're seeing in mystery of iniquity working. It's working so well. It is so alive. But yet how many people recognize it? Because it's in scripture. And it's talked about in Paul's time yet. And Paul's time was right after the cross of Jesus Christ, wasn't it? And it's still going on today. And it will continue to go on. Because once Jesus Christ takes us out of this world and we're caught up and we have finished the body of Christ church, then Satan can relax a little bit because he's going to have everything he thinks in control. He's going to bring in the son of perdition. He's going to bring in the beast. And he's going to bring in, because here's, here's the uh, uh, sad thing about that, why people will flock to the beast. It's just like the United States. Let's say Donald Trump gets elected and people are so thrilled, the majority of people, not all people, but majority of them will be thrilled. And then something happens. And no longer Donald Trump. No longer the country falls apart. It becomes a socialist state. Maybe it becomes a communist state. Maybe it becomes a dictatorship. Uh, dictatorship. Maybe it becomes totalitarianism. Maybe it becomes anything of these that we talked about prior. What's it going to do to the fabric of the nation of the people in the flesh? Well, they're going to lose hope. They're going to give up. They're going to look for anything. And they're going to reach out for anything that looks like it could bring them their salvation to get the country back. And here's old Satan. That might be so close to where we're going to be caught up because that's coming so close. We don't know when it's going to be, but it's so close. You need to be prepared. And that's what we need to warn you about. We're not going to warn you that, hey, you're, we're going to be caught up. And you're going to be left behind. That's not what we're warning you about. That's what's going to happen. But we're warning you have a chance to avoid that. If you just listen with your ears and hear what it is you're say, we're saying. Don't look at what we're trying to show you because we can't show you something that's in the spirit that you can't see because you can't understand it. And there's only one way you're going to understand it, by believing the gospel. That's the only chance you have. Otherwise, you'll be looking for that Savior that you otherwise thought you had, but is no longer there. So you're going to reach out for whatever else comes down the pipe. And Satan knows that. And he has that already planned out. Because the mystery of iniquity has been working since the cross. It never was mentioned before the cross, was it? It was never mentioned in the Old Testament. But it was mentioned in the revelation of the mystery. Stated by the uh, one that preached the revelation of the mystery to the Gentiles. And it was specifically chosen by Jesus Christ in the spirit to be the apostle to the Gentiles. Was Paul. And Paul tells the Gentiles, Paul tells us something. The work of iniquity has already been working back in 1 AD, the first century AD, ladies and gentlemen. Now we know what the mystery of iniquity is because it's still working. And everything that we talked about here and looked at that's happening is again to emphasize and to stress it's all temporary, but Satan does not want the blindness of mankind to realize that, realize that. And they can't. Because he gives them the gift of the Spirit. He teaches them through man's wisdom. Which is the basic thing that started it all. Was the religion after the cross. Because what he's teaching them. They're falling for lock, stock and barrel. But what we're showing them. Is something that is taught to us by the Holy Spirit. It is a free gift given to us by God. Because we are saved by grace through faith. They could have the same things. But in the natural state that they're in, it is foolishness unto them. They are blinded to it. And it is spiritually hidden. It is spiritually discerned. We've gone over this in Scripture. And the only way they're going to see it is if Jesus Christ shines their light into him, into them. If they choose to believe the gospel. You can do what you want with this video. I'm not enticing myself with the affairs of this world. I'm enticing myself with the affairs of the spirit of Jesus Christ. To be a soldier for Jesus Christ. And an evangelist for Jesus Christ. Because the time is near. And there isn't time to sit around thinking. Well it's going to get better. We just got to get through the election. May, ladies and gentlemen. There may not even be an election. Then what are you going to do? Where are you going to go? What are you going to reach out for? Are you going to be on your last rope? 
You don't have to be. Because what is waiting for you that Satan doesn't want you to know about, but we're the only ones on this earth that can tell you about the manifestation to make you realize there's eternal life waiting for you. Not in your religion, because your religion is what got this place in the mess that it is today. What's going to pull you out of that mess? There's nothing we can do. It is only Jesus Christ who went to the cross for you over 2,000 years ago that can pull you out of this mess in the Spirit. All we can do is present the revelation of the mystery, the spiritual Jesus Christ preaching of his living word to Paul in Paul's gospel, where you are saved by grace through faith. In the revelation of the mystery, in the dispensation of the grace of God that we're in, because Jesus Christ today is not dealing with the nations, which he will when he comes back a second time. Then all hell will break loose on this earth, for lack of a better term. Not before. But the worker of iniquity is still at work now. Otherwise, Paul would not have mentioned it, ladies and gentlemen, for us to know about and to apply to our lives today. We need to know this stuff. And we need to pass it on. Just as Paul said to his saints in Thessalonica, I'm saying to you tonight, Take heed, ladies and gentlemen. Let no man deceive you in any way. Trust in Jesus Christ in his message of salvation, which is, has eternal consequences to it. All you need to do is believe the gospel. You don't have to. You can discard this video all you want and just say I'm some kind of a conspiracy nut or I'm just some blowhard, I'm a false teacher, I'm a Satanist, I'm a cult leader, whatever you want to call me, that's fine. But I'm not going to bow to appease you to say the things that you want to hear. I'm going to give you the truth of Jesus Christ in Scripture. And that gospel that can save you, that can, once he shines his light into you, you'll be freed. You'll have the repentance unto the acknowledging of the truth. By God, you'll be able to pull yourself out of the snare of the devil who is holding you captive to this very day. And you can stand in the liberty of Jesus Christ that has made you free, never to be under the yoke of bondage again by just believing the gospel. You'll be sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. You'll be baptized into the body of Christ church if you believe. Because in Ephesians, uh, excuse me, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1, it says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein ye stand. Verse 2, by which also ye are saved, if you keep in memory, that which is preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. Verse 3, for it first of all unto you that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. And verse 4, and then he was buried, and then he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. And in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, it says, for by grace are ye saved, through faith, that is not of yourselves, it's a gift of God. Verse 9, not of works, lest any man should boast. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the only thing that will help mankind today. We can't stop the mystery of iniquity that is at work today, but we can warn you. We can make manifest what it is, who it is, and what it's doing by presenting the gospel. That's all we can do. Jesus Christ will do the rest. He already died on the cross for you. Give him a chance to fulfill it in you today. The choice is yours. You do with this video or what you want. I'm not forcing it on you. I'm just presenting it to you. What you decide, remember this, will have eternal consequences, whether they be good or whether they be bad. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Appreciate you listening. Home Bible study from my home to your home. This is Robert Hall of the Ready Divider. Thank you for taking the time to observe, the, observe this video. And always remember, ladies and gentlemen, good Lord willing, uh, until next time.